You have about 100 billion neurons in your brain. That's a lot. And so there's just no shortage of puzzles uh, to keep us occupied. I'm Joel Zilberberg. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Colorado School of Medicine. And in my lab, we study sensory representations. When I started my graduate training, I was working in cosmology, so I wanted to understand what the origins of the universe were. And ultimately, I just kind of got bored of telescopes, and this is what moved me into neuroscience. The neuroscience problem is one of understanding the internal universe, the one inside uh, our brains, whereas the, the big physics quests are to understand the external universe. The typical experiments that neuroscientists do to understand visual representations is you'll show lots of pictures or movies to an animal, and while you do that, you record the activities uh, of neurons in, in their brain. And what you find is there are some neurons that as you change the picture, those neurons change their activity levels. So they're referred to as being tuned. Interestingly, there are lots of other neurons that seem to be untuned. So they're still active, but as the picture changes, they just keep doing their thing, and they seem to ignore that picture altogether. Using data from the Allen Institute, I could look at the patterns of activity in visual cortex while the mouse looks at different stimuli, separate those neurons into the tuned ones and the untuned ones, and essentially confirm the main predictions of my theory work, which is that the untuned neurons really do contribute meaningfully. They're not junk, they're not just kind of there as filler, they're actually real meaningful players. The main vision in my lab, no pun intended, is to use our understanding of the brain's visual representations to help people that have visual deficits. And the most ambitious example of this that I can give is to try to make the Geordi LaForge visor from Star Trek. And so if we had a camera to brain translator that would take in pictures, tell us the corresponding pattern of brain activity, then we could just write those patterns into primary visual cortex and restore sight to blind individuals. Skepticism is very reasonable, but if you look throughout history, all big new technological advances have seemed very fanciful. History provides us with reason for optimism, and so I think it's easier than it sounds, although it's still quite hard.